Okay. Hi, everyone. It's awesome that so many people are able to come out so early. Uh, the speak first speaker today is Zahida Bora, and she's going to be doing a talk on doing what you love every day. So I love what you do every day. Thanks. Thanks, Zoe. Wow. Well, I'm so glad so many of you have actually come today, because I was expecting there would just be like three people after, um, was it delirium last night? Is that where everybody was hanging out? So um, thanks, for, thanks for coming. We were just playing with the uh, monitors here to see if we could get it projected larger, but um, I think we're just going to stick with this so we can um, start moving. I've got a lot of information to share, and um, so I'm going to go through this fairly rapidly. Hopefully we'll have time at the end. If not, I'll be around today, um, later today as well. So that's my Twitter handle and, of course, the FOSDEM uh, hashtag as well for any of you that's on Twitter. So I'm very excited to be here at FOSDEM. Um, I've been coming here for many years. I don't know how long has FOSDEM been actually going because um, I've been coming for like, it feels like, like almost 10 years. And um, it's only been like a two hour train ride from London. So um, it's been, you know, one of the great sort of European open source events to kick off the year. Um, so it's, it's exciting to be here and speaking here as well. Um, I was asked to um, share my journey um, in open source and um, what I've done. So it's, it's um, I, I guess it's not the norm. It's certainly not what I had planned. And, um, you know, I hope some of the tips and the stories that I share will uh, help you kind of think about your careers and um, the direction your careers are going in and hopefully find some of the opportunities um, to do what you love. So um, as many of you know, last year was um, 20th year for the OSI. And so open source was coined, the term was coined over 20 years ago. And um, that's kind of how long my career has been, almost 20 years. It will be 20 years this year. And I've been an active contributor in open source since then. So, you know, this is a career that happened um, <laughs> unplanned. And, um, you know, as you look through this, I kind of started off with Open Office as my first open source project. Um, I also created the, um, co-created with some of my colleagues at Google, um, the Google Summer of Code program. We started that in 2015. And, um, and we created the open document format um, with the open office project. Um, and more, more recently, um, I was at the cabinet office. Some of you may know the policies that governments are adopting around open standards and um, how open standards also enables open source to be used by governments, particularly I think the European governments are uh, very focused around open standards like the Dutch government and the UK government. So we got a policy through the UK government that all um, government information that's editable should be in open document format and that was in uh, 2014. So that was a policy that went through and currently, I'm at AWS. I'm not planning to go through my whole career here, but, you know, as I mentioned earlier, um, I started uh, in 99 with OpenOffice. And um, I guess, how many of you are OpenOffice or LibreOffice users? Awesome. I kind of expected most of the room to have their hands up, so that's very cool. Um, so I was leading the project, responsible for the project and the community, and... Um, it was seven and a half million lines of code, code that was acquired through a German organization, um, Star Division. And our job was to um, work on, internally on what is, what is the code that we can actually release and what's third party code. And then after we release it, how do we do open source? Remember, this was 1999, year 2000. Most people were only familiar with building software. Um, that was internally closed, you kind of just talked to your colleague. So it was quite a transition and quite a transformation <coughs> as a project um, to not only come up to speed in this new area of working, um, but also uh, embrace kind of um, a global community that eventually we, we developed all around the world. 
So it was pretty exciting times, and um, typically, um, many of you are working on developer tools, and so you don't actually touch end users uh, necessarily with the uh, projects that you're working on. But with something like Open Office, and it was Firefox as well at the time, um, we found that we were able to talk to end users as well. And even now, like last year, I was at the Open Source Summit. I was speaking in Prague. And I was in a taxi, and the taxi driver said to me, oh, what is this conference you're going to? You know, I've been taking a lot of people to it. And I said, oh, it's about open source. And, you know, how do you explain open source to the average person on the street? And, um, you know, luckily the driver said, oh, you mean like open office? And I said, yes. And he said, yes, I'm a user of open office. So um, it's kind of nice that we do have... Um, open source software that touches end users. Um, you know, uh, I was speaking in Parliament, and um, I asked everybody in the room to take out their iPhones and go to the terms and conditions. And in there, if you look, there's a whole list of all the open source software that's actually being used on the iPhone. So just getting people more and more aware that, you know, it touches everybody's lives right now. And it's a really big deal. Back then, it wasn't. But right now, it covers it, you know, a whole spectrum of technologies. So, you know, one of the important things was having mentors, because how do you teach a whole engineering team based in Germany, in Hamburg, um, that, uh, that, um, how to do open source? And Brian Bellendorf, I don't know if you're familiar with Brian, who's one of the early, uh, he was one of the Apache founders and he's now the executive director for the Hyperledger, the Blockchain Foundation. And Brian was very instrumental in teaching us the Apache way and teaching, you know, some of the early projects the Apache way. He, you know, we didn't have um, GitHub back then. We just had SourceForge. And, and I'm, I can't look in around the room. I think some of you were there with us back then as well. So... Um, I'm just kind of d telling you the story to just place it in context. And... Um, yeah, we, so Brian's company was providing the services that uh, Open Office and a lot of the Sun Microsystems projects were being hosted on. So we had to have hosted services to be able to host our, our large projects. And then um, at Google, you know, at part, as part of this two person team, we created this program office for open source. And it was the first time there was an open source program office that really focused on contributions and especially code contributions. Um, and we created Google Summer of Code because um, we wanted to engage more new people into the community, more interns into the community, and also, um, you know, c contribute and, and collaborate with the projects in increasing the open source code out there. So um, right now, there's about 2,000 mentors on Google Summer of Code and about 300 lines, million lines of code that have been contributed. I don't know how many of you are, have, were former interns or interns or mentors on GSOC. Can I see a hands, show of hands? Okay, that's, that's really, oh, one. That's very surprising for the FOSDEM crew. So if you're working on a project, I would absolutely um, recommend that you go check out this program and um, participate as a mentor if you have a project or submit your project for um, engagement. And I'll talk a little bit about uh, one of the projects that I work with uh, and what they're doing as well. But this is, you know, um, as an intern, you would get $4,500 for, for contributing to an open source project during the summer months for the three months. And as a mentor, you would have a student for that time pretty much dedicated to completing a project that you've specified. So uh, this, is, this is a really uh, powerful kind of program for any open source projects. Um, actually, um, before I go further, can I also get a show of hands of how many people are relatively new to open source? Okay, all right, that's, that's cool. That's good to know, maybe like, um, maybe like a third of the room. So, 
So Greg Stein was a mentor at Google, and um, he also was one of the early Apache members. And um, you know, he helped us really build out the organization and our programs. Um, I'm not going to go through a lot of these but pro projects, but um, one of the things I got to do was um, throughout my journey, I got to work with really inspirational people um, like the founders of technologies and um, people that were involved in the early days of open source. So, for example, I'm James Gosling, father of Java. So when I worked on NetBeans, um, we released a version in China and um, I had an opportunity to go work in China and travel with James. And one of the things we did was walk along the Great Wall of China. So, um, he, of, of course, um, many of you are familiar with James, and he currently works for Amazon Web Services. Um, the other person was Vint Cerf. Uh, while I was at Google, um, he and I traveled around Europe. I grabbed the opportunity to learn more about what universities were doing in Europe, what they were teaching in terms of open source, because our goal was to try and engage with the students to um, help include open source in some of the curriculum in universities. And so I, I got to travel with Vince, but also um, you know, engage Vint in um, more in kind of um, uh, open source and then open standards. So I ended up working for Vint and building an open standards office at Google. And then another person you may be familiar with is Mark Shuttleworth from uh, Canonical Ubuntu. Um, and as part of uh, the work I did, I got invited to Kenya um, to speak. And, and Mark and I spoke at the same event. And we were both working on uh, helping with education in places like Kenya um, and um, the African countries. As you know, he's South African and um, you know, one of his goals is engaging more with the African countries around technology as well and just collaborating on making a difference. Um, and you know, through, through our work and working with interesting projects, early stage projects as well, um, on the right, on my right, yeah, is um, uh, Jim Zemlin, and he's the executive director of the Linux Foundation. But back then, the Linux Foundation was maybe just him. So it was kind of very, very early days. And then last but not least, you know, my first community. This is the open, open office community. Um, over the years, you not only kind of like um, work together, um, debate issues, uh, you know, build and create, you know, code and content for your project, um, but you also develop kind of a friendship and get to know each other. And, um, and, some, and a lot of the communities still is in touch with each other. And two of the colleagues are working for government, so the Dutch government and French government. And, you know, this may be an area that, you know, you may be interested in following up in, but certainly a lot of government policies are adopting open source and open standards. So the French government have some uh, really great policies around everything they do should be released as open source software. And um, there's, you know, there has to be a pretty strong reason for it not to be released as open source software. So you know, as open source developers, as contributors to open source, there's going to be more and more and tremendous opportunities for working in government environments as well. So clearly, a lot of this is not um, something that I had planned. Uh, I, you can't really plan for it. But one of the things I did was every opportunity that came up to do something interesting, to meet interesting people, to work with them, to volunteer, I took up all of those opportunities. And that's what snowballed and, and led to this career. So um, there isn't a formula for um, doing this work, right? It's a passion of mine. Um, so I have to ask you, like, why, um, you know, what, you know, why do I do, why do I do open source? So this is this is my big reason. It's on my Twitter account. Um, you know, it's really, you know, it would be great if what you're doing is meaningful and beneficial to the world. So um, I just want to ask the audience, like, what are some of the things and the reasons why you're doing open source? Any anyone want to shout out? No? 
It's too early on Sunday morning. <laughs> well, um, okay. So uh, I gave this conference at a talk, uh, a talk at a conference in the U.S., and there was a lot of people shouting out. And there were things like uh, giving back um, is a reason, freedom is another reason, privacy, uh, transparency. Somebody was doing it for political activism, um, and just producing a better software for users and for themselves. So. Um, those are all absolutely valid reasons. Um, you know, a lot of the times, people come to the community for code, um, and then um, they stay because of the, of the people, right? So there are uh, Apache and um, in Debian, you know, they say code of a community, or come for, the co come for the code, stay for the community. So... Um, Right now, my role is uh, head of open source uh, strategy at AWS. And the reason um, I'm giving this talk um, on careers is that uh, I've been, I was, in my first year, I was building a team and managing a team. And in doing that, I ended up talking to a lot of people in the open source community. And I found that um, I was giving a lot of input into their careers and how they could build a career. And, I've also been speaking at universities in India and in Africa also um, in terms of advice for students and motivating students. So I thought it would be an interesting topic to cover here. So another, another quick question. Um, how many of you think open source has won? Okay, that's... Okay, that's, that's like about 80% of the room. Um, so some of the conferences I go to, and it's an open source crowd, um, it may end up being the whole room, or um, it may end up being just like 30%, even in an open source crowd. When I speak to like an enterprise audience, it, can only be, it may end up only being 10%. So the perception out there in the industry is very, very varied. Like, um, if you'd have gone to a government audience um, a couple of years back, absolutely, um, you know, you wouldn't get any hands going up. But if you'd go to somewhere like the French government that's very progressive, um, you would have a lot of hands up because they've done a lot of work within their government as well. And we've been disrupting um, this software industry, um, the open source community has, for over 20 years now. So, I mean, it's everywhere. It's in our devices. And it's in all the market sectors. And you know, two of the projects I'm involved in, one is about uh, reducing poverty around the world, and it's called MIFOS. And B612 Foundation is actually a project that's trying to save the planet from an asteroid attack. And they're also working on an open source platform. So there's a whole range of open source projects that you can get involved in um, based on your interests. So, you know, these are some of the headlines that we see that software is eating the world. And this is a quote from Mark Andreessen. And um, here's one that um, I know Jim Zemlin uses from the Linux Foundation uses a lot, saying that open source has won and open source is eating the software world. And, and it didn't happen overnight. It's taken time, right? And every company that's building services in the cloud this is the important thing. Every company is consuming open source software. They may not know it, um, and they may not know um, what to do with the fact that they're consuming open source software, and everybody's trying to come up to speed on open source, how to contribute, um, how to actively participate. And so there is a tremendous opportunity for every one of you that's engaged in open source um, to um, go out there and have very fulfilling careers, right? So, you know, you look at the trend here, um, and these are numbers from the Linux Foundation for last year. So 23 million, more than 23 million developers on GitHub, um, six, more than 64 million GitHub repos, and, and the number of projects are, um, you know, just growing. I'm sure that number's uh, a lot bigger than that now. So. There's huge momentum, and you know this is the scale that we're working at in open source. And at conferences, we kind of hear people like echoing back that you know 
software and open source is eating the world. So it's good news for all of you, for all of us, that the opportunities in open source is just going to grow. Um, and this is a job report that shows, you know, that em employers are actually looking for um, expertise in, you know, in cloud and web technologies, uh, in Linux, so, and, and the kind of skills that they're looking for as well. So, so you wouldn't have seen these numbers um, a few years ago, but this is growing not just in Europe. Um, it's also growing in uh, places like India as well that I've seen. Um, one thing I haven't seen at FOSDEM is a jobs board, and this is very typical of most of the open source um, events that I go to, um, and hopefully we'll see that at FOSDEM as well, where um, you, know, you can see what is available and who are the companies that are looking, but you only have to go online and just do a search on open source. And like every company out there, you know, um, you know Amazon's also hiring for open source positions. That's the only plug I have in this uh, for my employer. So <laughs> what are the kinds of roles? Um, you know, when I, was at, when I was at university, and I admittedly it was a long time ago, I'm gonna date myself now, um, the, there were two options. One was a programmer and the other one was a systems analyst, and that was it. Those were the only two tracks leaving university. So um, what are the things you can do um, besides you know, the function that you have uh, in open source if you wanted to um, look further afield. Um, these are just some of the roles that I've had working in open source, you know, ranging from, you know, release manager to contributor um, to setting up a governance board uh, to managing events um, to managing programs and creating a program like Google Summer of Code um, to coming out here and educating and advocating it. So. There's, there's a whole range of um, roles, and depending on the skill you have or the skills that you want to develop, because there's a tremendous opportunity to do that within open source, um, you can, within projects, look for people who have that skill and you think are actually um, doing really well in a particular space and start partnering with them and learning from them. So, um, actually, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and um, they said that they were working um, on organizational and people development, and, and said, well, I'm not sure that there's an opportunity for me in open source because I'm not a developer. But, you know, um, the, the, the people skills are really hugely in demand because um, open source is just, it is about people. It's about people coming together to build code and build technologies. And, you know, whenever Linus gets interviewed, he always says the technology part is very, very easy. Um, it's actually working with the people that actually becomes the biggest challenge. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure those of you that are experienced in open source projects are very familiar with that. And you have to, look around you and look at people who are very skilled in that because that is a really key piece of open source um, participation. So I'm going to cover the tips um, of working in a project and how to build your career. Um, depending on, you know, I already asked how many of you are newbies, so um, given there's a third of the um, room here that put the hand up, uh, I'm going to just go through those a little bit more in detail than some of the other areas. So, first of all, um, you have to think about um, if you're already in projects. Actually, um, just a quick show of hands. How many of you are not involved in a project? Okay, all right. So this next bit applies to all of you. Um, think about your... Um, what motivates you? What are you excited about? What are you using, right? Because um, when I think of the people that came to the Open Office project, they were, they were users of Open Office, so they were very passionate about giving back. And it was something that they could help contribute, but also they could help improve it for themselves and the rest of the community. So think about your interests and select your project based on that. So actually, um, I'm kind of encouraged there's a whole bunch of people here 
that are relatively new. But it's, you know, open source is, you get back what you put into it as well um, as a project, um, within a project, and within the community as well. So uh, not, just, um, not just the technologies, but also uh, look at the community. Look at, I call it, um, evaluate the tribe and, and the people. So when you join a project, um, you need to look at um, how many, uh, when, you, when people are responding, writing on the, on the mailing list, are they getting responses? Is the project very responsive? Um, are people friendly to each other? Um, are they dismissive? When you contribute, if you contribute something small at the outset, how is that received? Um, is there willingness to accept the work that you're doing? Is there willingness to point you in the right direction and not just, you know, go read the document and don't bother us, right? Um, is their website um, pretty well documented? Um, do they have tasks for new joiners to the project? So often projects will have like a list of, you know, here's, here's what, what we need help with, and it may be kind of in the readme file, here may be, here's some of the things that you could get involved in. If, if you're not finding um, a responsive community, or oh, one other thing is to read the code of conduct. And, and make sure that that aligns with your values as well. Um, so it's, it's not about the, just the code and contributing. Um, it's a, a whole package that you need to evaluate. And my first advice on anyone joining an open source project is uh, go onto the mailing list and do that for a couple of projects. Do that for three or four projects that you're interested in and just look for a while. It's perfectly, perfectly okay to go onto a project and just... Um, observe and, and see kind of how the community is managed because that's going to be um, pretty important because the work that you do, you will be contributing to that project and to that community. Yeah, so make sure you look at the readme docs and the to do docs and yeah, if none of these exists, um, go, go to another project. And, um, or if it's something you want to do, maybe you can make a suggestion, but be cognizant of um, the feedback that you get. You, know, you want to be in a welcoming community. And that was something that we fostered within our communities as well. So um, <clears throat> one of the things that the GSOC students, the Google Summer of Code students, say that they learn from joining an open source project is how to, how to use some of the tools out there. You know, if you're using GitHub, if you're using, if you're Apache, um, you may be using the tools there at Apache. You may be using another um, system for tracking and managing information as well. And um, a different governance model. So um, the, typically in a university environment, for all of you, you know, who are, who are at college, what you end up doing is... Um, you're focused on working just on your piece of work. And, you know, this is it. I'm, I'm going to submit my dissertation. I'm going to submit my code. In open source, you're collaboratively working with many, many people. And it's a different way of working, a different way of communicating, taking feedback, and integrating that feedback into your work. And, and not getting upset because somebody said that something you did wasn't... wasn't um, what they can accept, right? Um, you know, as long as they don't say your code sucks, you kind of, hopefully, it's a little bit more diplomatic. But um, there's an opportunity to improve all of your skills, and that's what the Google Summer of Code fa students found. And if you're new to open source, these are two fantastic references, and um, particularly Carl Fogel's book. Um, he's got a new one coming out, and you can find copies of that, PDFs of that online for free. Uh, and John O'Bacon's book, The Art of Community, How to Work in Community. They really both go uh, hand in hand. And it's a big part of this is making friends. And, you know, in an office environment, you have that. And here, you will, you'll be part of a virtual environment of people that you'll be connected to. Um, and, and this is very valuable later on. 
If you don't like it, vote with your feet and leave. That's okay. That's perfectly fine. You know, this was um, in 20, 2008, so about um, almost nine years uh, from, this, from the time the project was kicked off. Um, we were having events in lots of different countries, and a lot of the same people showed up at the events because they just wanted to connect with their buddies once a year and really meet in person and share. So how many of you have been working on project one to two years? Okay, fewer of you, okay. So there's a couple of things. I guess, you know, often, same, same, with, same with your job. You get, you get very focused on um, p uh, producing that piece of code, delivering what you need to, that you sometimes lose sight of the bigger picture. So it's really important to just step back. And um, here's a you know, great quote from Bill Joy that innovation happens elsewhere. So, you know, not just completely focused on your projects, but look outside at what some of the other projects are doing that might be interesting. Um, there's a huge opportunity to learn from developers um, because in open source, they come from all different companies, um, all different countries, um, all different backgrounds. And there must be somebody doing something innovative and creative that you can learn from. So if you haven't thought of... Um, participating in a community as a way of learning and, ex and experience to learn. This is something that you need to consider. And then, you know, observe by, learn by just kind of observing and um, watching different styles, whether it's coding or whether it's uh, resolving a problem. Somebody may just be so good at answering messages and resolving issues for people that that might, be, that might be a skill that you can learn from someone else. So, you know, ask yourself, what are you doing for your project besides the code contribution, right? Um, and here's kind of a, you know, Apache pyramid, which, which kind of says, you know, you go from a user to a contributor to a trusted committer to a lead and an architect. So there's a kind of a structure within Apache. Not all projects have this. And, um, you know, you may be in a position to really engage on helping improve your, improve your project, but engaging your newbies and start mentoring. You know, you can start mentoring from about a year into a project and start teaching new members to your community as well. So there's also things like event participation, showing up in your community and um, engaging face-to-face Writing skills is another big piece. So if you find that um, that's something that you want to focus on, that may be, especially someone who's been there a while, um, starting to produce better um, helpful information for the community um, would, be, would be a really good thing. And for, for the folks that have been in the projects for a couple of years, what you've been doing, go out and speak at conferences. Um, how many of you here are speakers? Awesome. Okay, that's about half the room. Excellent. Okay, um, for those of you who are not, this is a great way to get your work out there. And um, a lot of conferences will also pay for your travel. So if that's something that um, is a bar barrier to travel going, then you should look at that. Write papers. You could also write a book with your knowledge. I'm gonna, just going to step this up a little bit because I'm just conscious of time. Uh, how are we doing? Okay. So build your resume online. The social media, GitHub, um, you know, mailing list, Slack, Gitter, all the recruiters, all of the companies, I guess now even the government recruiters, everyone uh, will be looking at your profiles online and what you're doing. Um, so as part of working in open source, everything you do is already out there. And, and it's a really great way to not just to hire people, but also to get your knowledge and information out there, right? And be nice. I think that's really important in our community is um, just because you're at the end of an email, you don't know what kind of a situation somebody else is in. You just, so, you know, always remember, be nice, whatever you do. And, and that's always been a motto for all the projects that I've been involved in. Um, and to make, maintain 
uh, and make a healthy project and make it grow. Um, building effective teams is really important. And here's a great book that's um, uh, written by Ben, uh, Colin Sussman, and Brian Fitzpatrick. But they also have some really great YouTube videos um, that you could go back and look at. And, and it's kind of dealing with difficult people. I mean, it's part of life. If you're working with people, you're going to have um, great, you know, great buddies, but you're also going to have people that you don't agree with. So I'd highly recommend watching that. Um, for the folks who have been here and have been doing open source for five or more years, can I get a quick show? Okay, so that's like, well, about 40% of the room. Cool. So I think, um, you know, and, and the same kind of, I was thinking about, okay, what are the things that I do with projects? And, um, you know, you, if you're not interested, you may be interested in taking a leadership role. And I think this is a huge opportunity for those of you who've been doing open source for a long time. Um, building your leadership skills and developing that and developing leaders from within the community. So you've got to think about a transition, a succession plan as well, because you're continuing to do this, but you really need to help, like the folks that have been there a few years, um, really through their kind of next phase and into leadership roles as well. And I assume, I didn't see any hands go up for Google Summer of Code mentoring. I'm assuming and I'm hoping that some of you are mentoring within your projects because that is how we got to do, that's how I got to do open source was those two great mentors that I had. And I'm hoping that that features very largely in your projects. And if it isn't, I would uh, urge you to raise that within your projects as well. So I have, I have here, mentor, 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 and that's absolutely key. Um, so, you know, these are some of the founding fathers of uh, the ASF and, and, and the giants that, you know, on whose shoulders we all stand. So um, they've been responsible for, you know, teaching so many projects the Apache way and uh, helping a lot of the successful projects as well. And, and, you know, kind of model yourself on some of the folks that you see in open source, who you kind of admire, who you've learned from, or who you think have done a fabulous job, and really um, build your own skills that way. If you look at um, the Apache uh, Foundation, so you can move up to project management committee, and you can move up to a board level, and there are other opportunities on other projects to go into um, help being a community member on the board. Um, so I'm going to run through these fairly quickly because I think we had a slow start early on, so I'm going to need to um, run through these. So for a successful community, um, we all have superpowers, right? Some of you think superpowers are, you know, night vision, or flying, or um, let's see, telepathy. Um, but actually, everybody has superpowers. And there may be just something like being a warm, friendly face in the community. And I think that's really valuable, being a good listener, um, being a curator of people. And even superpowers have to work hard. Um, Remember, it's taken 20 years to get to this. It's not something that it's happened overnight. And I know that you know these days with um, uh, social media, everyone, you know, there's this kind of movement of yeah, I want it and I want it now. It's not. This is not open source. Is not about that. It's about hard work and it's about being persistent with time. And recruiting, it's a big part of the job. Everybody that's been in the projects for a while, every one of you is a recruiter, and probably for a developer, that they're probably squirming at the idea that, no, I'm not a recruiter. But you're all recruiting for your projects. Everybody you tell about how to use it and what are you doing is potentially could be interested in coming to work for your project. Diversity is really, really important, diversity and inclusion. and. Um, I was just in London just before coming here, and uh, the talk was about, um, the, the event was about um, design and accessibility. And if you think about people all over the world, 
that aren't like you, that may be differently abled. You know, they may be blind, they may be, they may be hard of hearing, but they're all part of our communities and they're all consumers of our software as well. So think about um, diversity in your projects and how do you serve the folks that are using your software that aren't abled in the same way that you are. And, um, you know, what are the tools and the skills that open source gives you? A big part of it is the community is your reference. You know, that is, that is the key to this, is um, not just the information that you put online, but everything you do out there, your community is your big reference. And there's so many of the folks that I work in, with open, in, in open source uh, have said to me, my, you know, my reference has been the community, and that's how it got this amazing role. So pay attention to that. Um, and it's your career. Um, and it's really up to you to kind of uh, manage this and, and build it. And some people I know, like Jeremy, who was here yesterday speaking, Jeremy Allison, um, he works at Google, and he's working full-time on Samba. And they hired Jeremy when I was there to come and just do that full time. So, you know, if you're shining on your project and it's something a company is interested in, um, they may just bring you in to just work on that because the contributions you're making matters to them. Um, it's, it's up to you to um, lead from within and take a look at the projects you're working in, take a look at what you're doing and um, really um, look at how you can not just shift what you're doing in your career, but also your project as well. And how can you help that grow? Build on your, um, and it really is the ticket you can write. So there's another talk very quickly I want to mention. It's from John Bacon that you can find online, and it's about burnout. And, you know, when you can work on open source projects 24 hours and, um, and still do your day job, um, there's a danger of burnout, so I would highly advise you to take a look at um, Jono's presentation and read about this and look at the signs, because you'll just say, yeah, I'm not burning out, but uh, it's something that's happening in our community, and so that's why these talks happen as well. And it's one of the areas where I think I find the most passionate people. Anybody that's involved in open source has such a passion for what they do, and it's kind of infectious, so, um, and it's really awesome to be around people in this space. Um, it's not all roses, and um, there are pitfalls, so you have to be aware of them. <clears throat> you need to put in the work, and it will pay you dividends. So it's up to you to be, really be the change that you want, and um, really you know, share and contribute and just be nice. Um, I was going to share a couple of stories, but I think we're kind of running short on time. So I'm not going to share these stories, but what I would like is, you know, if you have any questions, you can come up to me at the end. Um, I just have one um, last thing to say here is, you know, take, take all the opportunities that come your way and... Um, through open source, we've been able to not just transform industries, um, we've been able to transform people's careers and their lives as well. So it's, um, it's an incredibly powerful tool that will help you change your careers as well. So grab that and do what you love. Thank you.